Good morning. Welcome everybody to this very special day at First Congo. Um, this is the fourth Sunday of Advent. It's the beginning of Christmas week and we're so glad that everybody is here. And the first people I'm going to welcome is our newcomers. We may have a number of newcomers today because we might have some friends and family that are here to see our children in their Christmas pageant. Um, I'm going to ask you, please use the chat at the bottom of your Zoom screen. This is how we connect with each other during the service and and what I'm going to ask the newcomers to do is just to let us know that you're here. If you'll get on the chat and say who you are, and if you're not in Memphis, we'd like to know where you're from. And you might even let us know um, if there's a special reason you're here. If you're just visiting the church, and, you, and, and that's great, just say just visiting. Or if you're uh, here because you have a family member that's uh, going to be in the service. These are just things that help us connect and get to know each other better. Um, uh, so, so write on that and keep up with that. And also, I want to let you know that if, if First Congo is a place you would like to get more connected with, we would love to have you in our community. And so I'm going to suggest you may have already been on our website. And so just keep digging in that website. You might find, uh, hopefully find the um, contact information for our pastors. They would love to hear from you. So feel free to email to them. Um, you will also see where you can connect with the Congo Beat. That's our weekly newsletter. And once you get on the Congo Beat, you're really in, into it. You can see all of our announcements and our calendar and all these different things. We also put a lot of announcements on Facebook, Instagram. So we really try to make sure you don't get lost if you're looking for us. Um, and now I just wanna take a moment to tell you three things that I say each week because these are very important covenants of First Congregational Church, where our hearts are, where our minds and efforts are. And the first one is that we are just peace church. Everything we can do to be about peace. And secondly, um, that we are an open and affirming church in every inclusive way to the LGBTQIA folks anywhere. And we also have an anti-racist statement and commitment. And all of these things are on your order of worship. All of these covenants are in the, um, uh, the website and on the Congo Beat. So we want you to read those and understand more about who this community is and what we're about. Today, as you can tell, is a very special day. This is our children's no rehearsal Christmas pageant. And of course, we're always going out a little bit on a limb when we have no rehearsal uh, for our children's Christmas pageant. It's what makes it special. I will tell you that yesterday we did a quick uh, run through, kind of a technical run through. And I can promise you that the, the, that the person who's most apt to make a mistake today is going to be me. And so anyway, bear with us. It's a little harder to find each other on Zoom 
that it is when we're all there together in our worship service. But the children look beautiful. Their parents have been super cooperative. Um, Steve Garcia, Marsha Walton, all the folks um, that, that um, are part of putting this together. It's very special. So that'll be coming up a little bit later in the service. Um, I also want to let you know that tonight, of course, is the final night of Advent and our sanctuary will be open between 6 and 8 p.m. It's a beautiful experience if you haven't done that yet of meditation and prayer and in the atmosphere um, that really kind of only our congregation, I mean our sanctuary can can really evoke uh, the way that our art team has put it together. So if you're able to do that, they handle it very safely. Uh, so you will be distanced, your temperature will be taken, and you will be masked. Um, and also Thursday is Christmas Eve, two services. All of these announcements uh, about the services are in your order of worship, and they'll be coming out uh, again later this week. Um, but the 430 service is something we haven't done before for the children and their families. And so I'm going to tell you that Catherine and I are going to be in the South parking lot to greet you at 430, and we'll let each family group go through um, the, uh, the um, Las Posadas event together. So just come to to the south parking lot and park and uh, then we'll guide you from there then on christmas eve night at 10 o'clock we'll be back at this zoom this same address that we're doing for worship for our lessons and carol service um, one last thing I wanted to bring to your attention because May Yancey told me that her daughter Stephanie Green, it's her birthday today. I'm not even going to try to find her because we've got a lot of folks on here. But Stephanie, I know you're within hearing and it's a big happy birthday to you. She's virtual. She's in Killeen, Texas, and she found us in this virtual world of being a church and she comes every Sunday. She attends a lot of our classes and we have really grown to love Stephanie and we want to wish her a happy birthday. Um, with that said, it's a different kind of Christmas experience, but it's good we're here together. Lord Jesus, master of both the light and the darkness, send your Holy Spirit upon our preparations for Christmas. We who have so much to do and seek quiet spaces to hear your voice each day. We who are anxious over many things look forward to your coming among us. We who are blessed in so many ways long for the complete joy of your kingdom. We whose hearts are heavy seek the joy of your presence. We are your people, walking in darkness, yet seeking the light. To you we say, come Lord Jesus, amen. The sun will rise, the sun will rise, bringing life to the earth as it springs from the ground. The sun will rise, the sun will rise, won't you dry all your tears, lay your burden down, won't you dry all your tears, lay
First Congo. Today is extra special because it's our annual no rehearsal Christmas pageant, but with a bit of a twist this year. Because we can't all be together in our beautiful sanctuary, the kids and their families are bringing the Christmas story to you from their very own homes. Today, Michael Serena will be your narrator. If we can spotlight Michael. Hey, Michael. Hi. We also have a guest pageant director this year. Can we spotlight Muley the Mule, please? Hello, gosh, I'm glad to be here, everybody, and play the role of stage manager and, and stuff. And oh, and just a quick reminder to our cast and singers and, and everybody else that's watching, uh, please make sure to mute yourself when you're not speaking and unmute yourself when you are, uh, because you might not want to be heard saying some things, right? So back to you, Steve. Muley. In addition to hearing Michael and Millie's voices throughout today's pageant, you're also going to hear many familiar songs. Feel free, and in fact, you are encouraged to sing along. So without further ado, we bring to you this year's No Rehearsal Children's Christmas Pageant. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of Heaven. Angels, oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. About two thousand years ago. In the town of Nazareth, there lived a young woman named Mary. The scene is set. Enter Mary. Elia, you're on. <laughs> she was engaged to be married to Joseph, a carpenter. It's hammer time. Joseph enters the scene. One day... An angel appeared before her and told her she had been chosen to no, have a special no, baby. The baby will be God's child, and she must call him Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, on piano, Gabriel the angel. Thank you. 
soon after the angel's visit, Mary and Joseph were married. Mary was due to have her baby when they were told they had to go on a long journey to Bethlehem, which was where Joseph came from. This was because they had to pay a special tax. Mary had to ride on a donkey for a few days over the hills of Galilee. Hey, I'm kin to that donkey. And away we go. <laughs> oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. At last, Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem. It was crowded with other people who needed to pay their taxes. Mary was very tired and needed a place to stay. At each end, the story... No, it's fine. There was no... Elliot, it's fine. No room at the end. Should have tried an Airbnb. No room. Eventually, they found unkind innkeeper. No room. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. I might have some room where my stables are. So Mary and Joseph went to the manger. That's your cue, dove, cow, sheep, and donkey. Oh, and music! And so it was that a few hours later, Mary gave birth to her child in that stable. She wrapped Jesus in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger full of hay. Mary lays the baby Jesus away in a manger. With the baby's head. Away in a manger now. Good, good, good. Good. Perfect. At the same time, on a hillside overlooking Bethlehem, some shepherds were watching over their sheep. Cue the shepherds, the sheep, and the hillsides. A bright light appeared in the sky. It's a star! They were very afraid. There were angels sent by God. 
The angels told these shepherds not to be afraid because they had some good news. They said the child of God had been born and they would find the baby in Bethlehem. The shepherds wanted to go and see the baby. Gathering over the manger, the shepherds and animals and angels sing on high. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis day. When they arrived at the stable, they were filled with joy at seizing Jesus, at seeing Jesus lying in the manger. They knelt down and worshipped him. They told Mary and Joseph how the angels had appeared in the sky and told them that Jesus was to be the savior of the world. people who saw a new star shining high in the sky. These wise ones, who were called magi, studied the stars, and they knew this was a very special star. They studied their schools where it said that whenever a bright new star appeared, it meant that a great ruler had been born. To the travel of our three wise people. The Magi decided to find this new ruler. They went to Jerusalem to see King Herod, as they thought the baby would be in the palace. And they came to the very tiny King Herod. Oh, I messed up. He's tall. <laughs> tall King Herod. They asked to see the child that would be king of the Jews. The king was troubled. He thought this new king may take away his throne. He told them to return when they had found the baby so that he could worship the child himself. The Magi set off to find the baby. They were guided by the star to the stable in Bethlehem. Here they knelt down and worshiped Jesus. They gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. <laughs> then entered in those wise men three fell reverently upon their knee and offered their in his presence. <laughs> Their 
golden man, frankincense, no well, no well, no well, no well. Born is the king of Israel. That night, the three magi had the same dream where an angel warned them that King Herod wanted to kill Jesus and told them not to go back to his palace. The wise ones went back to their own country without calling to see Herod. Soon after Joseph had a dream for an angel, told him to take Mary and Jesus to Egypt, as King Herod had ordered that Jesus be killed. They left Bethlehem <laughs> right away. When the Magi did not return, Herod ordered that baby boys in Bethlehem be killed. Yeah. Okay. Find Jesus. Keep yeah. going, keep on. As he was safe. <laughs> Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glory of his righteousness and weapons of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. Good job, Roy Duck. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Bye. We're still going through. Should, should we sing more? Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let me their songs employ while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. We got more? Because we got more. No more the sins and sorrows grow. No thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. For as the curse is found, for as the curse is found, for as, for as the curse is found. Last one. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glory of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. There we go. Good job, everyone. Good job. Good job. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good job, all the kids. Love ya. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Our scripture reading today is from Zephaniah 3, 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love and he will exult over you with loud as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you 
so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Well, Old Testament prophets have never been known to mince words when it comes to predicting disaster. But of all of them, Zephaniah was probably the gloomiest. As one scholar put it, Zephaniah took special delight in predicting, quote, the day of the Lord, when things were going to turn out badly for the Israelites and they'd get theirs. Zephaniah could give the grim reaper a run for his money. Which is what makes this morning's reading stand out. I will remove disaster from you, Zephaniah says. I will gather the outcast. I will bring you home. It's a message so strangely optimistic and reassuring that many th people think it was written near the, the very end of Zephaniah's life, when his horrible predictions had come true and the people of Israel were in such a miserable exile from their homeland that even he realized they needed a message of hope. Their lands had been overrun, their synagogues destroyed, their homes, they had been bound as prisoners and hauled miles through the desert to a place they knew nothing about and what they did know disgusted them. In Babylon, they were living with people whose language was strange, whose religion offended them, whose customs and habits, daily lives felt totally foreign. And so you see the weight of today's reading. What could be more reassuring to people who were so very far from home than to receive word that yes, there was a place where they belonged, a place just for them. And yes, they could and would get there directly. I will bring you home, the prophecy reads. We're just five calendar days away from Christmas, but for many of us, Christmas feels like it's much further away than that. We're not going home this year. Our family members are not coming to us. We're not gathering to carol and sing. Our Christmas feasts will be, well, smaller. Gift giving is taking place online. We won't see big groups of Christians gathering at the Vatican or in sanctuaries around the world. Processionals to Bethlehem have been canceled. We've lost friends and family members. We're fearful about what the next weeks will bring. We are in a dark winter, the experts tell us. And so we feel vulnerable and isolated and uncertain. Just five days away from Christmas, but we feel in exile. We watch white supremacist groups circle the homes of elected officials, gather in the streets of Washington, DC, and we say, who are these people? Why such hatred? On the interstate, angry and impatient drivers whiz in and out of traffic, every man or woman for himself. We feel far from home in a violent and aggressive world. Reinhold Niebuhr once wrote, the human spirit is incapable of ridding itself of an abiding sense of homelessness. Let me say that again. The human spirit is incapable of ridding itself of an abiding sense of homelessness. He's right. It's as if we never feel quite at home anywhere, not completely, and yet we're always seeking that sweet spot. The Christmas season makes big promises. <laughs> In a typical year, we go through mobbed airports and clogged highways as if our lives depending depended on getting home, getting to a place that we belong for Christmas. Yes, we do know feelings of exile, even when we are especially at home. A woman who has lived for 50 years in her own house, 
with the kids now grown up. She and her husband are used to welcoming their children home every Christmas with their kids and spouses and babies. And now the husband is gone and the house has been sold and life is lived in a nursing home. And this year, there's not even the benefit of visitors in the lobby. You know, families with children make up the fastest growing segment of the homeless population. No Christmas tree when you're living in your car. And gay couples who can't travel home together, fearing rejection or antagonism from the families that raised them. This fear of being in exile, even at home, it always threatens, but maybe especially this time of year, of being alone with too much to bear, which is what makes Zephaniah's prophecy so important for us to claim. Hear the good news. God says, I will remove disaster from you. I will gather the outcast and I will bring you home. How can this be? Well, you know, I can't get my mind off the fact that the Christmas star is coming to us this week. For the first time in 800 years, the Christmas star. Now, scientists among us will speak of the convergence of the two largest planets in our solar system, Saturn and Jupiter. It can't be scientifically known, but it can be spiritually hypothesized that this is the same convergence that guided the wise men to the stable in Bethlehem or called to the shepherds out in the field. And it is calling to us this year, to the entire planet, in such a time of great need, after 800 years of absence. Now, we'll have to look up to see it, away from our Christmas trees, away from the gifts under it, away from our expectations and traditional routines, away from our preoccupations and worries. We will have to look up to see that the light is there, waiting to meet us in this week when the nights are their very longest. And the message seems clear, that whether we are by ourselves or with other people, we are not alone this week. There is a Christmas star reminding us that miracles come in the strangest of ways and the most unexpected of nights. Old men and teenage girls will experience the calling of this star all around the world just as they have for centuries. You know, each of us has something inside us that we often forget we have. And it's this space, a place near our hearts that's designed to carry the light of Christmas. It ignites when we feel touched or moved or inspired. And we feel it ache when our hearts are literally breaking with sadness or grief. But here's what I want you to know as we head into this Christmas week, especially if you are feeling sad or alone or your heart is grieving. If you look to the sky, you can see the Christmas star. And if you stop for a minute and surround yourself with silence, a kind of holy quiet, you can bring the light of that star within you. I mean that literally visualize and call that light into you. And it will come to that special place near your heart and it will remind you that you are never alone, that goodness surrounds and walks with us and that the love that you are longing for already belongs to you. God's gift to us at Christmas is a reminder that the light comes to us and lives among us and lives within us. And when you put yourself in the presence of the Christmas star, when you bring it within, you're in a place where it's safe to tell the truth, safe to be who you really are in the presence of a holy and a loving God. We come with broken places and unanswered questions and God takes us in. The light comes and makes its home in us. According to the Gospel of Luke, 
during the reign of Caesar Augustus, every person went to his or her own town to be registered. Pilgrims that year included Joseph and Mary, Mary who was expecting a child. And in the city of David called Bethlehem, under the light of the Christmas star, the baby was born as Zephaniah had promised and the exile was over for all of us everywhere throughout all time the Lord our God was here to stay amen we now worship God as we present our offerings Mummies and daddies always believe that their little angels are special and deep. And you could grow up to be anything, but who? Isn't it wonderful that we can look at all of our realities and still have hope and still anticipate peace, share love, and celebrate with joy. Indeed, we are a community. So let us join together once again in our affirmation of community to affirm that we will be together. We will stand as brothers and sisters given life by one God, we will be together. We will watch out for one another. We will listen to what needs to be said in a spirit of compassion. We will respect the power of silence. We will wait for the slowest. We will sooner or later catch up with the fastest. We will dry the tears of those who are weeping and know that they will dry ours when the time comes. We will let ourselves begin to feel at least a little of the pain 
of those we have considered our enemies. We will entrust our stories to each other. We will not be skeptical that peace can come. We will not forget the joy of life. We will not forget to be grateful. We will do our best to stir in each other hope, courage, and faith. Let us pray together. Good morning, protective and compassionate parent. On this last day of Advent, we thank you for your protection, your compassion, and most of all, your love. Of all that you have given us, without a doubt, your love is the greatest gift of all. You sent that gift in the creation of a child, the Lord and Savior baby Jesus. You continue to send us gifts of love in the creation of children. We thank you for children in all the different presentations they come. Help us appreciate those differences. Help us be loving and forgiving to the children around us. Help us to be loving and forgiving to the child or the children within us. Grow us into having the unconditional love you demonstrated for Israel and all humanity from our womb knitting beginnings. We give special thanks for the children of First Congregational Church, their parents, extended families, teachers of formal and informal education. Keep us mindful that we all belong to the same swarms of informal teachers whom they watch and see things we never know about ourselves. Keep us mindful that the insights and prophecies of children are authentic, pure, and powerful. Let love be our intercessor, our connector, and our sealant. Amen and amen. And in our immediate community, God, Deborah Langston requests prayer support for a family where three members are infected with COVID in degrees of severity and another struggling with esophageal cancer. Additionally, her son's fiance, Sarah, also tested COVID positive, though not severe. Rachel, Eric, and Gilbert Ober are caring for each other in the COVID positive challenge, challenges that they face. Rachel's asthma has complicated her diagnosis, but all, thank God, are improving. Our pianist Tammy Holt has had COVID sweep through her family, but the two girls who had had it were mild and the rest of the family avoided infections. Their quarantines ended this weekend. Martha Lanier's sister Mary and Mary's husband Tim have COVID-19. Mary is improving, but Tim is declining, and Lord, we just need showers of blessings for your healing touch. It really is difficult, God, to begin imagining the reality of the worldwide COVID. Death and death toll. But God, you know the pain, heartbreak, and suffering millions of families are trying to endure. We offer our small candlelit prayers to light the way. We wave adieu to a valiant forefather of Memphis transformed. Reverend Dr. James L. Netters was pastor emeritus of Mount Vernon Baptist Church and the first African-American activist in so many arenas of sacred, secular, civic and political life in Memphis. Well done and for 93 years good and faithful servant, leader and brother. Brenda and Reggie Nichols celebrated Christmas a little early with a virtual wedding for the marriage of their daughter, Rosalind Nichols, 
to Deverick Brown. Woohoo! God, you know that's uh, hallelujah in UCC language, but you may know it better than I. In your personal silence now, prepare your hearts to make room for the light and love that the Christ child brought and reactivates this time each year. Almighty God, we place every to-do list, every need, every frightening diagnosis, every impossible dream, every spoken and unspoken prayer in your care. And we let our hearts believe that hope, peace, joy, and love have bloomed in us once again with the mystery and inspiration of birth. Amen, amen, and amen. As we prepare to recite together our covenant prayer, just hold this thought. It's a blessing to be able to say it. It's not just something we do because we're here together. Some people woke up this morning and they couldn't speak. 
Some people woke up this morning and they didn't know they were awake. Being able to say this together week after week is more than a ritual, it's a gift. So once again, we say, we covenant with the Lord and with one another and do bind ourselves in the presence of God to walk together in all his ways, according as he is pleased to reveal himself unto us in his blessed word of truth. Thank you for indulging me in that moment of pensive thinking and prayer. And now prepare your hearts to receive the joy of Christmas. We'll see you on the other side of Christmas or at least at some Christmas Eve services. Bless you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Jesus, our brother, and the Holy Spirit, our strength, be with us and abide with us always. Amen. And now we'll join together in singing Dona Nobis Pachum, God Give Us Peace. Christmas baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful too. Oh, no. <laughs> well, the pageant was oh, amazing. Hi. There are lots of new choir members, Christmas potential Christmas. choir members that are out there that sing in the pageant today. Definitely. Yes, that's yeah, right. Lindley. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Merry Christmas. Well, what he does, he sang with me today. Yeah. <laughs> the group guys were great. Oh, they were awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Good job. Good job. Some show. Well, didn't all the kids do a good job today, huh? Oh, yeah. Very good job. Yeah. Yeah. Sure did. Yeah. 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 The kids were amazing. Hey, really. You're on screen. Hi, Marcia. Hi, Marcia. Hi, Marcia. Hi, Marcia. You're muted. Marcia. Uh, you're muted, Marcia. Rosa. 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 Yeah, I yelled at Grace. Yes. Ricky Lee and Tim. Merry Christmas. 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 Merry Christmas.
Costumes did an incredible job. I know. Those are Bet Betsy Reader specials. Oh my God! Aww. So they live again with Betsy. That's wonderful. Betsy, Betsy, made, Betsy made the camels and also the sheep, and we didn't have a dove this year. Um, and my sister made the magi and the mm -hmm. angels. And, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very creative. Yes, we will remember Betsy Reader every single year when we put children in those camels. In. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She was a lot of fun too. And this really worked. This actually really works. Yeah. Congratulations. This really worked today. Reindeer. 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 Where? Oh, oh, look at Micah. He loves that one. <laughs> How's your recovery going, Chuck? <laughs> Is that how you that, Chuck, when you're taking your meds? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck just had surgery. That's why we're giving it <laughs> Chuck, who is your friend there? Oh, yeah. uh, this is Chris Moose. Chris Moose. <laughs> it's a moose, you're right. You're right, Roy Duff. Chris Moose, right. I thought of reindeer. It's a moose. Did you make that? No, I found him in the store. Mm -hmm. I had to, store. He had to come home with me. Yeah, well, I'm glad great. that he came home with you. Yeah. You can always adopt the uh, animals who need a home. He's <laughs> really cool. How nice. Oh, he's got it. Oh, let me go back. Well, now we know he was born and not hatched. Right. Oh, man. He has collapsible legs, too. <laughs> <laughs> It's a potato. Ah. Oh, God, that's so funny. My dad said he's a potato. <laughs> I saw, I guess they think that I saw Lolly. I think they've taken off. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Carla's yeah. afraid to get on. Molly's afraid to turn the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see them. All right, I'll, we'll unmute for you. But yeah, you're right. I got him in a store too. <laughs> he was on sale. I would just get an app. But I had to support it. I appreciate y'all very much. That was beautiful today. Everything. Uh, it awesome. was a wonderful today. Oh, it really was. Oh, really good service. That's perfect for Memphis. Oh, it makes us think of Memphis. That's our proof that we ever lived in Memphis. Oh. <laughs> I love it. That's wonderful. Christmas. <laughs> the VIP of the day for me. Yes. All of that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I have a little adrenaline going, I will say that. Kind of amazing what Julia you? can pull together. <laughs> there were a couple of times that I was looking Merry for Christmas everybody. We'll see you on Christmas Eve. All right. Bye. 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 Hi, Rosa. Hi, Rosa. Hi. Hi. See you. Great to see you. Good to see your pretty face. Hello. Hello. This is fun. It's like is cheers. It, is it still snowing, Dennis? Norm. Yeah, but there's what a Dennis, at, at the Donna Nobis Pachum was absolutely lovely. Absolutely. Yes. I got to sing all the parts. <laughs> <laughs> was that you singing that, Dennis? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Sarah all the way through. Oh, Sarah. Sarah oh, good job, Sarah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was perfect. Glow, glow was really good, Dennis. I don't know how you made me sound so good. I know I, I like tore up that song and that recording. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard. I'm so proud of that song. That's yeah, awesome. I was like, how are you going to do this crazy song virtually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that one again, right, Dennis? That will be Christmas Eve? Yeah, Christmas. we'll have a video for that. Oh, good. Um, I just wanted to play it as much as I possibly could. <laughs> I've listened to it several times myself. It's uh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's one of my favorites. I've mixed that one four times, so 
It's uh, wow. there's a newer version out. Too. Smile, Steve. Hi, Steve. Uh, Steve. Steve. Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations. Good job, guys. Good, good job. job, Steve. Really wow, good job. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Good script. Bye. The script. <laughs> See ya. Bye bye. bye. Good bye. job bye. on the script there. I don't know who bye. was saying bye. I just wanted to say bye to him. <laughs> bye. Hey, bye, everybody. Bye. 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 bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Micah. I'm going to close this down. All right. All right. See you later. Bye. We love you. Bye. 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 Bye.